and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and a sort of first impressions video. Now, I've already done a first impressions of Airfix's brand new tool, 1 to 24 scale Spitfire Mark 9, but it was a live stream and it wasn't accessible to everybody. And what I wanted to do was go back and revisit the kit, having a closer look at some of the plastic, what you get in the box, um, so that if you're still in two minds, we can help you make that decision. Now, if you order it online direct from Airfix right now, as I record this on the 18th of November 2022, it does come with a free poster. And what you're seeing here is the box as it gets delivered with the little poster pack on the top. The poster is a slightly expanded version of the box art and very nice it is too, depicting a, a D-Day livery Spitfire and we can see plenty of Spitfires in the sky and some ships crossing the channel. It's a lovely bit of um, artwork. So you get that as part of your package if you order it at the moment. So that's a bit of a, a limited time deal I guess. The box itself is actually really nice. It has a, a real good quality feel uh, about it. Um, it's actually matte, not the usual shiny box that you glossy box that you get from from Airfix, and that just somehow gives it a, a more grown up feel. And the back of the box has got the Airfix logo embossed on it, so it does actually feel really nice. Um, if you've had a 124 scale aircraft from Airfix before, then you're going to be surprised at the size of the box. It's quite small compared to the, the Hellcat um, or the Typhoon, um, and it's a, a little bit deeper maybe, but yeah, um, the box is a fair bit smaller, but the sprues are more compactly organised, not as spread out particularly as the, the Typhoon was. Um, so the packaging is really interesting. There is some paper sheets in there dividing some of the um, larger parts and then other stuff is in bags, separate bags per two sprues. Um, so let's have a look at the plastic so we're looking at the lower wing first, and both wings are all in one piece um, moulded together. Now this is the only part of the kit where I was able to find any sink. And if you look on the leading edge, you can just about see there's a little bit of sink there. Now that sink appears everywhere where there's one of these tabs. So you can see these location tabs on the inside there. The sink itself is minor and easy to fix and it's the only sink I could find like I say um, but essentially it's not really a problem at all. Uh, on the upside the amount of fastener detail um, on the part is really really high. It's very nice, it's nicely done and it all looks present and correct. It's actually quite a busy um, piece of surface. So we can see here the centre section that, that bridges the two um, wings, we can see the gaps there for the, the radiators, twin radiators on the Mark 9 of course. Um, and it does look really nice. The upper wing now and the wing spar, um, and there isn't much in the way of um, surface texturing, there's lots and lots and lots of rivet detail, but not much in the way of canning, but there is any other areas of the model, so I assume that this is all correct. Um, there is plenty of fastener detail on the wing spar also. One of the highlights of the um, uh, upper wing is the fact that you've got the openings for um, the ammunition for the cannons and those openings are really shallow. They're not heavy like they were on the Hellcat um, and so it's got a nice realistic feel. Moving to the clear parts now and there are two bubble canopies included in the kit. This is an options it's build options. If you look closely, you'll see on this one that there is a seam running right through the middle there in line with the sprue gate. Um, now, the instructions explain this. This bubble is perfectly correct in terms of size and form, but they can't get around the seam, so you have to polish it out. The other canopy gives you the option 
of sticking with one that doesn't need polishing up. And this is explained in step 238 when the canopy is being added. And you can see there referencing the two different canopies. Now looking here at the um, dials, um, you've got two options and they're both in clear plastic and I'm not really sure why. The option at the top has all of the dials on so that you can pick them out and paint them yourself and below it doesn't so you can put the decals on. But the decals go on top so there's nothing to be gained by having it see-through because everything gets covered in a decal or paint so I'm, I'm not quite sure what the thinking was there but they are very nice and crisply molded some of the parts throughout the kit are slide molded this is definitely one of them um, and we can see the little slide molding seam there um, so it's very very easy to miss so make sure you take note wherever you've got a flat bit of sprue you've probably got a slide mold seam to look at um, but this will easily come out with a very um, fine grit sanding stick, not a problem at all. This is another slide moulded part, it's on one of the fuselage halves, um, just in front of the uh, cockpit glass there. And, and the seam here is actually quite heavy, it's quite a step. Now I don't know whether there should be a step there and they've taken... Um, the advantage of that to, to position the slide mold tool or whether it's just a heavy step but either way any cleanup's going to have to be very careful that we don't remove the fastener detail there um, but nice to see the slide molding techniques being used the two fuse large halves themselves on the whole are really really nice pieces of molding um, you can see some subtle canning on the surfaces there um, and once you get um, uh, some primer down, they'll really pop out. Um, the, the fastener detail is really nice, uh, as is all the panel detail. So they are two very nice looking fuselage halves, to be honest. Not sure what the tail cutout is for, possibly for different variations later on. Um, who knows, but um, uh, nice to see two really nice fuselage halves. Here we can see some of the uh, internal spars for the wings. How much of this will be seen, I don't know, but I'm assuming that in some places we will see at least some of it. Uh, and they seem to have done a really uh, good, crisp job of moulding them. Also on the same sprue is the cannons. And, and this is one of the areas where the kit, uh, for me, under delivers a little bit. Um, and the disappointment here is that the open ends of the cannon barrels, the little flared end there, is solid. And um, really, given that they have done slide moulding in places in this kit, they could have slide moulded them and given us some nice open um, ended barrels, which means we'd be less likely to have to go out and replace them. Obviously, you can drill them out, but given that it's a flared end, it's never going to be quite... Um, spot on is it so I imagine that many modelers are going to want to change these with with brass or resin replacements um, here we have some of the landing bay um, uh, walls there is fastener detail it is so subtle that even on camera it's hardly being picked up but it is there there's quite a few uh, um, small parts actually throughout the kit as you go and many of them have nice little details on. Notice the ammunition on the barrels there and some of the cutouts in the other parts. Here we can see the am ammunition again and it's got nice little steps depicting the difference between the case and the tip. It's very nicely done. I particularly liked the finesse on the moulding of the radiators. Look at how lovely that honeycomb grill is. It's a real piece of work, really nice. That'll look amazing under a bit of paint and wash. I was pleased at how thin some of the covers are that you can remove from the wings to get access. So you could place them on the wings and they wouldn't look out of place. There isn't really a need to replace them with photo etch, although I suspect some people will want to. And look at how nice that noughts and crosses fasteners are. Really nice. 
The wing tips are separate to allow for the clipped wing version, of course, um, and it uses a straightforward biscuit fitting to join them. I was really pleased to see that Airfix had taken the time to ensure the creases in the seat were all unique and different, which avoids that clinical AutoCAD look that some kits can have on their um, soft surfaces. These are the inner walls of the cockpit, so uh, this is what you'll see before the many parts that get built upon it, and it all looks really nice and authentic. A lot of painting to be done. And this is the cockpit floor. Um, you can also see um, some of the seat harness, which I thought wasn't too bad for plastic moulded. Obviously, some modellers will want to uh, replace that with something different. And here we can see the other part of the seat harness. Um, but also look at some of the tiny pipework and what have you. Um, some really nice moulding going on. Very little seam, so cleanup's going to be easy. And a lot of crisp, very detailed moulding. Here we've got the tyres. They're made up of two opposing halves. Um, I was glad to see that we had separate um, wheel hubs. And I was also glad to see that we had some sidewall um, writing on there as well that'll help pick out the tyres and make them more interesting. Not everyone's a fan of the two half approach but personally um, it doesn't bother me so much. The wheel hubs themselves look uh, really nice and have their uh, valves in and look at how meaty the landing gear is. The obvious omission here being some form of brake line so some research is needed to be able to add your own. Here we can see uh, some of the uh, smaller parts, the battery tray, uh, and also the cockpit bulkhead that the seat mounts onto. And although a lot of it will be hidden by the seat, um, they haven't skimped on the detail. Throughout the build, Airfix have been really clever with how they've avoided putting ejector pin marks in places you really wouldn't want to have them. Um, but inevitably, there's one or two, and the most obvious are on some of the engine cowlings. But in the main, in the cockpit, there is very little that you're going to have to do to sort out ejector pins. And if you're minded to start adding your own wiring looms, all the dials and gauges have got backs to aid you with that process. Um, some of the bulkheads look like they may, might need drilling out. Um, I don't know enough about it, so a little bit of research is probably needed on the cockpit before you get going. Most of the engine compartment uh, components appear to be on one sprue. And a number of people have uh, commented that the engine is so nice looking that they would build that in a, as a model in its own right and buy it separately. So that's something for Airfix to think about maybe. Certainly the engine detail is really very, very nice. Everything, uh, as the rest of the kit is, is very crisply moulded uh, and well presented and should look awesome once painted up. Now the fishtail exhaust um, pipes um, have pluses and minuses. Um, I like the fact that they've given you a separate um, piece that you have to glue in so that you've got a nice opening for the exhaust and that should look nice. But I wasn't sure about this hollowed out underneath. How is it possible that we're gonna see that? In which case that detracts quite a bit. There is no blanking plates for them so you'd have to fill that yourself. And also, look where the sprue gate is, right on top of the mold seam. So probably gonna end up sanding the whole thing off and putting it back on with some milliput or similar. But all the engine pipe work uh, is really nicely moulded and all the leads appear to be present as well. So unlike in the Hellcat, there's no instruction to add your own um, copper wire or anything. It all appears to be there.
Here we've got the tail parts and there are some options in there, some different shapes when you look at it. Um, again, lots of lovely surface detail, very crisply moulded and very authentic looking. The propeller has been designed so it can be displayed with the spinner off and all the components that would be covered by the spinner um, can be seen. Um, so I think that's quite a nice effect, especially if you're wanting to show a stripped down engine. Um, and it would appear that all the engine uh, cowling covers um, can be put on with the engine in place so everything fits as it should. Also note that we've got individual propeller blades there and they were actually really, really thin um, and I was really impressed with the shape uh, that they got on the propellers. They weren't thick and chunky in any way at all. We have depressions for the fastener holes in the um, aircraft frame. Um, some very careful drilling out. Uh, may just do that. I suspect there might be some photo etch replacements come down the line at some point But actually they look really good as they are and with a bit of a wash you'd never know they were weren't hollow On the lower cowling airfix appear to have emulated the join uh, on the lower cowling there um, with uh, the rivet detail uh, only being present on one half now of course if you're um, displaying this with the cowling off so you can see the engine you won't be using these parts at all anyhow this is without doubt the worst ejector pin mark area um, which is the inside of the engine cowling so if you're going to display your model with half the cowlings off and half the cowlings on you will have to do some work on these they're all um, impressions so they need filling um, and sanding but it's not a big job to be honest because the rest of the surface is totally smooth so not too bad moving on to the decals now the decals are cartograph and as such they are really really nicely done we'll take you in close in a sec and you can so see how clever they've been with some of them uh, the one thing that is obvious is they haven't grouped them together as they used to with common and then different paint schemes now this is the second kit that they've done this the Avro Anson also um, they abandoned that approach I suspect it's a cost saving and to be honest it's how most people do it so nothing lost but um, they are quite closely grouped in places especially some of the dials so you will have to remove your decals with care now look at how clever the decal is with this writing here there is no decal film but in between that writing so it's gonna look like it's painted on uh, it will be a very delicate decal to put on anyway and look at the finesse of some of these small decals the dials and um, little plaques that go inside the cockpit um, they look really really good so I can't see why you'd want to not use the decals and just paint your dials because they are great you get separate uh, paint sheets um, from Airfix in this kit and one of those sheets has um, a decal sh uh, sheet as well showing you the positions of all the stencils regardless of which version you're doing. And then this is paint scheme E, the French one with the clipped wings. And there are four other paint schemes uh, available. Um, one that is tropical um, and one that is set for D-Day um, but I think this is the one I'll end up doing with Popeye on it. The instructions are the usual Airfix format. There's 44 pages of them and they take you through it um, very carefully and closely indeed um, it's very clear set of instructions for me aircraft air, air fix instructions are some of the very best instructions on the market it's clear where to put things and clear where you should have put things uh, and it shows you what you did in the last step so I 
So that is it for our look at Airfix's 1 to 24 scale Mark 9 Spitfire. I think it's a beautiful kit. I think it's going to be an absolute winner for Airfix. Uh, and I know that there's been a lot of excitement about it. So I'm looking forward to building this at some point. And as we've started talking about building it, if you're interested in getting this and building it, it is definitely worth you trying to dig out a copy of the November Airfix Model World magazine. Uh, in that magazine, there was um, a big supplement on the uh, Mark 9 Spitfire, which culminated in a build of uh, the test shot of the kit in the clip. Uh, clipped winged French uh, paint uh, version and it looks really really nice takes you through the full build and the painting so it's worth digging it out if you can get hold of it okay that's it for now thank you very very much for looking in um, you guys take care enjoy your modeling and model kit stuff we'll see you very soon <laughs>